Blessed be the Holy Trinity. One God who creates, redeems, and sustains us and all of creation. Amen. To you, O oh God, all hearts are open. To you, all desires known. We come to you confessing our sins. You claim us in baptismal grace and made us alive through water and your word. Yet we fail to live faithfully as your people, to come to your table and scripture when we need them, to trust you and proclaim Christ through word and deed. We do not care enough for others and the world you have made or work as diligently as we could for justice and peace on earth. Forgive us in your mercy and remember us in your love. Show us your ways, teach us your paths and lead us in justice and truth for the sake of your goodness in Jesus Christ, our savior, amen. By water and the Holy Spirit, God gives you new birth and through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, God forgives you all your sins by the spirit's fire god gives you power to speak and to live in light of transforming faith the god of mercy and might strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Welcome to Worship with Peace Lutheran Church out of Austin, Texas, this week of the Festival of Pentecost. We are so glad that we can be together, that we can stand at this threshold in the world, the thresholds in our lives, and hear how the spirit comes to us, makes us alive again, and brings us into new life with amazing power. We especially give thanks for the students in our midst who confirm their faith this week. Ava, Evan, Rex, and Ruby. We will pray for them and uh, surround them from a distance with our prayers today. 
and this week. If you need a bulletin for worship today, you can find one at peaceaustin.org. The remaining two hymns will be number 397, Loving Spirit, and 396, Spirit of Gentleness. Today for worship, our pattern is a little different from what it has usually been, and our pattern will continue to be a little different in weeks going forward, bit by bit. Today, we have this service of the word here online, available for whenever you have been able to connect. If you're connecting live on Sunday morning and you are local to Austin, then you are invited. Well, I mean, even if you're not local and you want a road trip, but you are invited to come give thanks for baptism, pray for our confirmands and have Holy Communion uh, throughout this afternoon on the Peace Campus. We will be outdoors, weather permitting. We do have a rain plan. Um, we will give thanks for baptism, pray for our confirmands, share Holy Communion. You're invited to wear your mask. There will be a brief moment where you may take it off for communion if you are comfortable doing so, and that will be your choice. If we need to shelter from weather, then we will be just inside the front doors in the rotunda entrance with the doors open for airflow. Um, and hopefully the weather will cooperate and we'll be able to be just right outdoors um, in that same area. There is no 7 p.m. outdoor worship tonight because of our pattern for the evening. Our confirmands will gather um, with their families this evening for the affirmation of baptism service after we've had the chance to pray for them throughout the day. Many thanks today to leaders in this liturgy who shared the gift of many languages. We remember today the birth of the church and how the spirit is not confined by age or class or religion or language and that God's gospel speaks in all languages. So there will be parts of this service where we will hear other languages spoken, specifically at the greeting of peace, the creed and the Lord's prayer. You are invited throughout this service to pray and participate in the language closest to your hearts. And we thank those who have languages close to their hearts other than English that they've shared for leading worship. We are in the midst of some protocol transition per um, COVID. And so I will not go into in-depth detail here um, in wake of recent guidance changes. Our regathering task force met last week and our council is reviewing their recommendations. Um, effective immediately because we are in stage two of the protocols put forth by Austin Public Health, indoor gatherings of up to 25 people are approved. Some of the specifics of masking and distancing guidelines will uh, be publicized shortly. And I'm um, trying to think of the other protocol shifts that are um, immediate. That's the most important one for this exact moment. Um, and you can also anticipate now that uh, we will be moving back towards smaller indoor gatherings, including for worship. And um, as I mentioned about uh, the other gatherings, we'll have more specific protocols to share with you shortly and timelines. But we look forward to some shifts in the way we worship. Um, you will, should still be able to come pretty much to the same place online per, in perpetuity if you need to and if that is what is right for you, but we will be adding to our online opportunity, in-person opportunities. The earliest in-person Sunday morning worship service, though, will be June 20th because we are going to worship um, online with the, syn the whole synod, the weekend of synod assembly, which is June 6th. So that's going to kind of set up our transition timeline. So it won't be before that. Um, Pastor on the Patio continues. I will be outside at the church campus this coming Friday morning from 9 to 11 a.m. Would love to visit with you and also always happy to visit at another time if that is better or in another place if that is better. So I've been grateful to be able to connect uh, with folks a little bit more and more as we've been able to safely emerge into some more in-person connection. So please feel free to let me know if I can connect with you at any time. And always still, we have Zoom. We've learned how to use that. So I'm also always available to connect across any distance as well in that space. Now, as we remember the gift of the spirit coming in great wind and fire, we remember that God's spirit is so deeply a part of us that it is as close as our very breath. So as you do anything that might help you feel close to God, and this community gathering for worship today, um, as you prepare maybe anything in your space, I invite you also to know that within your lungs is the breath of life and that God cannot be any closer than that. So I invite you to breathe 
and notice how close we are to the spirit of God today and always. We continue our worship with the prayer of the day. Let us pray. Mighty God, you breathe life into our bones and your spirit brings truth to the world. Send us this spirit, transform us by your truth and give us language to proclaim your gospel through Jesus Christ, our savior and Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Your service continues with the hymn of praise. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. reading from Ezekiel. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O Lord, you know. Then he said to me, prophesy to the bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you and you shall live. I will lay sinews upon you and will cause flesh to come upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded. And as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. 
Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy mortal and say to the breath. Thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, our bones have dried up and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore prophesy and say to them, thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I opened your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. I will put my spirit within you and you shall live and I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 104 will be led by the cantor. The people may join in singing the psalm. How manifold are your works, O Lord! In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is a sea, great and wide, with its swarms too many to number, living things both small and great. There go the ships to and fro, and Leviathan which you made for the sport of it. All of them look to you to give them their food in due season. You give it to them, they gather it. You opened your hand and they are filled with good things. When you hide your face, they are terrified. When you take away their breath, they die and return to the dust. You send forth your spirit, and they are created, and so you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. O Lord, rejoice in all your works. You look at the earth and it trembles. You touch the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise my God while I have my being. May these words of mine please God. I will rejoice in the Lord. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Hallelujah. A reading from Acts. If we receive human testimony, the testimony of God is greater. For when the day of Pentecost had come, the apostles were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven, there came a sound like a rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and the tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. At this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all of these who are speaking Galileans? How is it that we hear each of them in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, and Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, 
Cretans and Arabs, in our own language, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, ah, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the 11, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your, song, your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. I will show portents in the heavens above and signs in the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Children of all ages are invited to listen to the children's sermon with Pastor Carolyn. Hello, friends. I am so glad that you are here today to celebrate such a special day in the church's year. This is the festival of Pentecost, perhaps one of the three greatest mysteries and greatest celebrations in the church's time. Today, we remember the birthday of the church. This is when the church began after Jesus lived, taught, died, rose again, came back to be with his friends and followers, and then ascended to heaven. And after Jesus went up, the Holy Spirit came down. It says in the reading we just heard from Acts that it was like a huge rush of wind. And then that people saw things that looked like fire over the heads of the disciples, telling everyone the truth about God. And even though people were from everywhere, they all understood in their own languages We'll hear some different languages today to remember how God speaks to everyone in their own language. And we also have some special signs of the Spirit's presence. We have, usually I have my candle. I don't know if you saw that, but today I have something bigger to show the power of the fire of the Spirit. And I want to talk a little bit about that Spirit's presence in each of our lives. Because this flame is very big, and I don't want you to go playing with anything that makes fire without a grown-up close by to help and keep you safe. Fire isn't something to play with, but it does show us really powerful things. And I don't know if you saw when I lit this fire, but it just took a little match for it to turn into such a big flame. Fire is so powerful. And the fire of the Holy Spirit, Peter teaches everyone today, can come through anyone. It doesn't matter if you're really big or little or old or young or what gender you are, if you're a boy or a girl. It doesn't matter if you are really important in the world or if people don't think you're important at all. God speaks through each of us. It means we each have a spark, a little bit of the fire of the spirit in us. And that means we can do amazing things because it only takes a little flame to make a big, powerful fire. So if you want to and you can come to the church building this afternoon, we're going to have a way to show how the fire of the spirit, the sparks of the spirit are in each of our lives and how that can make a big, powerful way of showing God's love. So one of my friends has prepared one already. You can see it has these ribbons tied together and they wrote the sparks of the spirit that they find in their life on here. Their sparks are that they are helpful and kind. And they're going, we're going to be able to add this at church to a big work where all of our sparks can be together. So there are some of these at church. You'll be able to write on one if you want to yourself and the grownups can too. And put them all together. Or maybe you have something like some of these pieces just at home and you might want to bring something from home that has your spark on it. 
you can write it down with words or you can just show it with with materials like these. And like I said, we'll have these materials at church as well. But I want you to think about the little sparks in your life and in your heart that can show the spirit and the love of God because you have them. So I want you to think about what it is you have. Maybe you are like my friend who is helpful and kind. Maybe you are very good at sharing or giving hugs when someone needs encouragement. Maybe you are very creative and you can make beautiful artwork or sing beautiful songs. I don't know what your sparks are, only you know that. But we can share them and think about them today and think about how powerful they can be in the world and that God chooses us, even if we don't feel very important, to speak God's love in the world. And that is powerful indeed. Will you pray with me? Let us pray. God, Thank you for the sparks of the spirit in each of our lives. Thank you, especially for the sparks of the spirit in our friends, Ava and Evan and Rex and Ruby, who will be confirming the promises of their baptism today. Help us be courageous to find our sparks and show your love everywhere in the world and to listen when we see other people showing your love and teaching in the world too. In your name we pray, amen. Thanks for this time, friends. It's good to be with you. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 15th and 16th chapters. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, When the Advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth, who comes from the Father, he will testify on my behalf. You also are to testify, because you have been with me from the beginning. I did not say these things to you from the beginning because I was with you, but now I am going to him who sent me. Yet none of you asks me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your hearts. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will prove the world wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment, about sin because they do not believe in me, about righteousness because I am going to the Father and you will see me no longer, about judgment because the ruler of this world has been condemned. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, if he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason, I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. A gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O oh Christ. Pentecost. It is a joyful, fiery celebration. One of the three great times in the church's year. But it is also kind of an earthquake. Today we mark tectonic shifts in the life of the ancient church and in our own world and in the lives of young people in our community. As Bob Dylan would sing, the times they are a changing. Looking back even further than the time of Jesus, this festival where the spirit comes to the disciples 
it was already a moment for marking change and the passage of time before it was ever any kind of Christian holiday. When Jesus' friends gathered in Jerusalem, that fiery, windy, spirit-filled day thousands of years ago, they were there to celebrate a first fruits festival that was 50 days after Passover called Pentecost. We didn't invent the name. And the name comes from that 50 days, Penta. Five. People of faith have been marking seasons of change in the earth and in our own lives for as long as we have drawn breath. Today, we honor that new chapters of our lives and our calling arrive, sometimes out of a whirlwind. And like the newly minted apostles, when new calls come to us, our gifts come alive, are lit aflame by those sparks. Sometimes then people are drawn to us and the work we are doing and other people will dismiss and mock us from a distance. To our dear confirmands, Rex and Ruby and Ava and Evan, we're so excited for you as you are confirmed this week. Excited for how those sparks of the Holy Spirit will continue to come alive in your life. We're excited for what callings you have discovered and will discover. And we pray that you will walk with confidence in your identity as beloved children of God. Even when some people don't get you or don't appreciate you or don't believe in you. We believe in you. And even more than that, God believes in you, has chosen and claimed you in baptism. God is wild about you. Loves to watch you discover what you love about yourself. And God will also always sit with you when you struggle to find your way or trust how awesome you really are. Finding our way, finding our callings, it is almost always as scary as it is exciting. So it's okay when we feel both of those things, when something new comes. God calls us to the very edge of our experiences and our knowledge over and over again and shows us what is possible, what we can do through God who strengthens us. That day that the Spirit rushed into the room where the disciples were waiting, I doubt any of them would have begun to guess what would become possible, even though they had seen over and over again the kinds of things that God could make possible in Jesus. This time that we are in today, right now, it honestly feels a little bit like I imagine it felt back then standing at the edge of something mysterious and new and uncertain, at the places where endings and beginnings meet. The end of a school year is, is always a time, I think, to go to the edge of where we've been and think about what, what new is coming. Maybe a new adventure traveling in the summertime or a new chapter of learning, growing, trying something different, finding new friendships. Newness is, is often on the horizon at this time of year. And that sense of transition of in-betweenness, I think it's even stronger than usual in the world right now. I think we are all deeply in that feeling together. We are in a time of shift. I won't say that we are at the end of a pandemic because that isn't as tidy a chap as getting to leave a chapter behind us and close a book. What has happened in this last year and more will continue to shape what happens next. It will continue to be with us and it isn't really over. But the world turned upside down and inside out 14 months or so ago for most of us, or 
maybe we were able to see how upside down and inside out the world already was in a new way. Now it feels like maybe we are finally looking forward into the future, not just into a fog, but into a new road. I don't know how you feel today, but I'm certainly not sure where that road leads just yet or how much it will look like the roads that brought us here to where we are now. I hope there are parts of what comes next that are familiar. And I also hope that we will feel the spirit's fire making us new, blazing new pathways, that there will be some things that we get to leave behind. We know that God will go with us as we find our way into what is next. There is no going back. That's never really been part of our story. We've tried to make it part of our story for a long time from the Israelites onward and even before, but we're always invited to find a way forward with God. We've all been changed in this time that we've experienced too. I think even what was familiar before is going to feel strange at first if we return. So be gentle with yourself and let yourself be surprised. And give yourself time to feel what we feel. I hope you can honor your experience, your full experience of the transitions that are coming. And I hope that you can be gentle with yourself. I hope that you can hear and trust the wisdom that is deep within you as close as your bones and your breath. May this be a time that we listen to ourselves and to one another and to God. Because I think we may hear messages that we don't even understand how it is that we understand. Like those crowds who heard the disciples preaching their message in the streets of Jerusalem that day. But they knew in their bones what it, what it was and that it was for them and that it was good. I am so glad also that our Old Testament reading today was what we just heard from Ezekiel because Ezekiel's visit to the Valley of the Dry Bones feels a little bit strange on Pentecost, but also perfect. Ezekiel's vision tells us about death and life, about what is old and what is new in such a particular way. Ezekiel is carried this valley full of death and desolation in order to witness the power of God's spirit and life. And how is it that that happens? God tells Ezekiel to prophesy to the bones and to the breath that life might come into them. And though Ezekiel doesn't relate for us the exact words that he uses, he does tell us that he obeys God's command to do that. And then he watches while bones join together and become flesh again, that they breathe again. It is the power of God's spirit that does it. But Ezekiel speaks the words so that it happens. God chooses to work through us. God's spirit chooses to move through us. Speaking like Ezekiel did requires breath. God moves in our words. God's spirit is presence in our speech. Quite literally, our words matter. They have power. They change the world. And how we let the spirit flow through our speak, speech and action changes things. God makes the bones live through Ezekiel's words, through the breath of the spirit that flows not just out in the world in a general way, but into Ezekiel's lungs and across his vocal cords and out of his mouth in his speech and action. God will do so much with the spirit moving through us. God's going to work. But we might have to say some things. And that can be a hard calling. 
it can be hard to know what truths are needed to be spoken. We live in a world though that needs bold speakers of truth and love. So I hope today on this Pentecost that you can trust that when you speak truth in love, God will be present and active, even if it isn't easy. The other thing that I wonder when I think about that valley and those bones and this story of new life is frankly what new life really looks like and feels like. I wonder if those bones that came alive again that day, those bodies that breathed again that day, I wonder if they in that valley happened to have a mirror to look in, would they have recognized themselves? I wonder if their hair was the same color that it had been before, if their, if their voices sounded the same as they had before, if they had the same scars that had marked their bodies before. And what might each of those things tell us about the kind of new life that God brings through the spirit? Sometimes we enter new chapters of life and we hardly feel like ourselves anymore, or maybe even more, we look back on older chapters of our life and barely recognize who we've been. And sometimes that's good. Sometimes maybe it isn't. In this in-between time where we find ourselves now, I wonder what parts of ourselves are so deeply who we are that they will always be with us as deep as bone and breath, no matter what else comes. And I wonder what parts of us will emerge new and transformed, hard maybe even to recognize. beloved ones, especially Ruby and Evan and Rex and Ava. I pray you find newness where you need it now and throughout your lives and that you always can trust the heart of who you are, who you have been made to be by the God who loves you and has sent so many others to love you too. I hope you are bold to speak God's love into being in your life for yourself and for the sake of the world. The Spirit's breath moving through you. And as Peter shows us in the words of the prophet Joel, it is not only the ones who we expect who speak on God's behalf. It is the young and the old, people of our, all genders, and not only the powerful, but maybe, maybe especially the disempowered. May we trust today that we are claimed in the waters of baptism chosen to speak on behalf of God for the sake of the world. And may we also listen, trusting that others also are called to speak for God, to form the world, perhaps the ones we least expect. This is the gift of Pentecost. This is the earthquake. This is the whirlwind. The spirit is on the loose in your life, in the world, beyond all boundaries across all time, bringing us into new life, going with us every step of the way. Thanks be to God. Amen. The hymn of the day is hymn 397, Loving Spirit.
is my comfort in your presence i may rest loving spirit loving spirit you have chosen me to be you have drawn me to your wonder you have set your sign With the whole church, we proclaim our resurrection faith in the language closest to each of our hearts, led today in Arabic. أؤمن بإله واحد آب ضابط الكل خالق السماء والأرض كل ما يرى وما لا يرى وبرب واحد يسوع المسيح ابن الله الوحيد المولود من الآب قبل كل الدهور نور من نور إله حق من إله حق مولود غير مخلوق مساو للآب في الجوهر الذي به كان كل شيء الذي من أجلنا نحن البشر ومن أجل خلاصنا نزل من السماء وتجسد من الروح القدس من مريم العذراء وتأنس وصلب عنا على عهد بلاطس البنطي وتألم وقبر وقام في اليوم الثالث على ما في الكتب وصعد إلى السماء وجلس عن يمين الآب وأيضا يأتي بمجد ليدين الأحياء والأموات الذي لا فناء لملكه وبالروح القدس الرب المحيي المنبثق من الآب الذي هو مع الآب والابن مسجود له وموجد الناطق في الأنبياء وبكنيسة واحدة جامعة مقدسة رسولية وأعترف بمعودية واحدة لمعصرة الخطايا وأترجى قياما الموتى والحياة في الدهر الآتي آمين Alive in the risen Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit we bring our prayers before God who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. Gracious God, you give the Holy Spirit to your church, filling it with many and varied gifts. And the church throughout the world strengthen us in our visioning and dreaming that it may discover anew the Spirit's creative work. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of life, your mighty works are too numerous to count. The earth is full of your creatures, living things both great and small. Open your hand and give them the necessities of this life. Send your fresh spirit over the face of the earth. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of the nations, at the sound of the rushing wind, people speaking different languages proclaimed and heard together your deeds of power. Fill the leaders of nations with your Holy Spirit so that they exercise your gracious will in the lives of people. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of faithfulness, you tend to the needs of your people, even the size of our hearts. Hear those who cry out to you in distress. Restore to wholeness all who are in need this day. And those we name before you now, silently or aloud. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of love, fill this community with gratitude for the gifts we have received from you. We pray especially with joy and gratitude for Ruby, Ava, Rex, and Evan, as they affirm the promises of their baptism. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. God of hope, those who have died in you raise their eternal song of praise. We give you thanks for the many gifts of your people and rejoice in the witness of your saints. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now, as we prepare... To reflect on the music of the offertory, you are invited, as always, 
to, to think about those things that are given into your care, gifts for the sake of the kingdom, especially at this Pentecost. I invite you to remember that there is no spark of the spirit too small to matter. And so we give thanks for our gifts and ask God to guide us in using them to proclaim love and life in the world. Jesus came and lived among us and he taught us to forgive. He died upon the cross and rose that in him we might live. He commissioned his disciples on a mount in Galilee. All authority in heaven and earth has been given unto me. Go therefore, make disciples, baptize them in the name of Father, Son, and Spirit throughout the world. Call us beloved children and welcome us to your table. Receive our lives and the gifts we offer. Abide with us and send us in service to a suffering world. For the sake of your beloved child, Jesus Christ. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, we pray as Jesus taught us in the language closest to each of our hearts, led today in Finnish. Isä meidän jokalle taivaissa, pyhitetty olkoon sinun nimesi, tulkoon sinun valtakuntasi, tapahtukoon sinun tahtosi, myös maan päällä niin kuin taivaassa. Anna meille tänä päivänä meidän jokapäiväinen leipämme, ja anna meille meidän syntimme anteeksi, niin kuin mekin anteeksi annamme niille, jotka ovat meitä vastaan rikkoneet. 
Äläkä saata meitä kiusauksen, vaan päästä meidät pahasta. Sillä sinun on valtakunta ja voima ja kunnia iankaikkisesti. Amen. As we prepare to receive the blessing, a reminder to continue to hold our confirmands in prayer. We do not have a live online communion service today because if you are nearby and wish, you are invited to stop by between 2.30 and 5.30 for Thanksgiving for baptism, prayers for our confirmands and communion outdoors at the Peace Campus, weather permitting, and in the rotunda if we must take shelter from some rain. Um, you are invited to stop by um, as individual households or, or small groups of folks. So anytime between 2.30 and 5.30 that works for you, feel free to come if you wish. And you're invited to reflect on the sparks of the spirit that are present in your life, um, as was mentioned in the children's sermon, as well as some other communications, because you will be invited as you come to campus to share your sparks to add to a piece of community liturgical artwork. If you would like to add something to that artwork but can't be there in person, please feel free to comment here or send a note uh, with a word or phrase that represents your spirit's gifts and spark in your life, and we will add it to the artwork on your behalf. Now I invite you to receive this blessing. May our glorious God grant you a spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Lord Jesus the God of life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Amen. The sending hymn is hymn 396, Spirit of Gentleness.
we receive the greeting of peace in languages from across the world. Que a paz esteja com vocês. Pax vobiscum. La paix de Dieu soit avec vous. Fred vare megde. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and also, also with, with you. you.